good morning. It is Monday. I just had this memory of shortly after we got the white car. Hold that thought. I'll be right back. And we're back. I had this memory of right after, well, shortly after we got the convertible. Love that car. It was super cool. It was really fun. And she was talking about wanting to get a different horse and, and not having the money. And I remember saying to her, let's sell the car. You know, we love the car. It's, it's cool. But I was like, I would support you in any way I could. So we love the car, but if we could sell it, and that would be the tipping point for her to be able to get a horse that was good for her, you know, whether it was a dressage horse or a jumper. I was like, yeah, let's do Like, it's a no-brainer. It just came to my mind. I was like, that's right. I seriously entertained the idea of doing Doing that and, and I was willing to do that and now I think all the while there was money there like, I just thought it illustrated two things my willingness to do anything for her and and the fact that I just don't think things were as honest as I thought they were let's learn Spanish then I was just thinking about like she's apparently moving north convertible in the Bay Area is less practical than in Southern California I mean I'm not saying it won't be good but I wonder how often she puts the top down anytime I drove that car I had the top down I was like if we're gonna get a convertible I'm gonna put the top down as often as I can, even if it means putting the heat on, <laughs> which I did and was awesome. It's becoming less and less my problem and I'm really working on thinking about it less and less. So you and I will have to find something new to talk about as things draw to a close. Not that I'm naive enough to think it'll be over soon. What I imagine will happen is this. I will at some point sign the quit claim so that she can buy property and leave as long as my attorney approves. Yeah, he's great. If you need an attorney in San Diego, let me know privately and I'll I'll give you his info because I really like him. Anyway, I think the quick claim will end up happening and then we'll do some kind of division of property just so that we can sell our house. Then legally it will get ugly with lawyers and all that crap for spousal support and money and stuff. I, I think that's probably how it'll go. She's just desperate to be done with me, gone from me. And it, it's so funny now versus when I first started making these videos, uh, I'm, I'm more okay with it now because nothing has improved, <laughs> nothing has been friendly or amicable or, or change for the better. So I too am excited for her to be gone, to be done with me, to be free of her because whereas I haven't done anything, she has. I wouldn't go so far as to say she's toxic, but she's certainly not a healthy influence on my life. So uh, yeah, when we can get her out of my life, that'll be a good thing for sure. Is she toxic? Maybe, I, I don't know. It's still hard to say because because I'm still married and, and I'm still loyal to the marriage, even though it's not done and even though it hasn't been good for a long time. I committed to the thing. I believed in it. So it's hard for me to say things against it, even though she's out. I'm, I'm, I'm exiting, but until the final paperwork is signed. Hi there. So I was talking to a mom yesterday. I don't know if I told you this or not, but... Uh, I had taken some pictures of kids jumping over jumps for one of the kids, not because I'm a creeper. I was gonna give the pictures to one of the moms, and when I opened up the, you know, camera roll on my phone, there were a bunch of pictures of me, you know, doing this. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's me in the car vlogging. She was like, what do you vlog about? And I was like, uh, I hope this came across well. I was like, I can't really talk about it yet, but once all the paperwork is signed, um, it'll become more obvious. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think my story is a secret at the barn anymore. I think everyone knows. More or less. Maybe they don't know about the deception and cheating and stuff, but that they all know I'm on my way towards getting divorced, or at least I'm separated, or that I'm eligible if I want to frame it positively. I don't think anyone's interested. I think these shirts are too open. Okay, so what's going on today? Today. Today's a wild card kind of day. One, got to grade the safety test. Wild card of today will be the traffic goes all the way up the bridge. It's hard to get to school early. Like if I leave. 20 minutes later, I get a straight shot to school. If I leave at this time, I end up sitting in traffic on the bridge and getting to school similarly timed to when I leave later. Hi there. You know, some days you leave school just kind of weary and today is one of those days. I am just spent. And I don't have a really good reason why. It was just a long day, it wasn't bad. My heart is just a little heavy. Like I'm just kind of, I don't know why, I've got anxiety right now. And staying after school, I, mean, I, I think I know what it, what it is. You know, I have this opportunity that I could take that I shouldn't. You know, it's expensive and 
wild, but I still want to do it. It's that just sort of like little kid petulance of like, I want to and I can't. And I guess that's what it is to be an adult. I, I think in some ways it's easier to say no to opportunities when you have something else that's that you're you're excited about. It's easy to turn down plans to go out if you're excited to hang out at home with your person. If staying at home with the person you love is almost equally as good as going out, it, it's like, well, I just want to stay home with this person every night. And I get that and I miss that. You know, and I didn't go to the barn today and I can't go to the barn tomorrow because it's parents' night. So I feel this little like sadness of like, I'm gonna miss the barn people. And yeah, I'm by no means even close to over the loneliness. I got a little touch today of that missing my old life thing, which is so funny because I, I am delighted that she's gonna go away, but it's an ups and downs process. And uh, on a long day at work that leaves you a little, you know, energy depleted and just a little tired and then when you have opportunities that you can't take for reasons of money, sort of two strikes against you, you're just a little bit low, then the situation just becomes a little bit more lonely. Like I'm lonely, it's 4.30, I'm gonna go home and have no one really to talk to but the dog. And I mean, she's great, but she doesn't talk back. You know what I haven't done in a while? Walk down to the taco stand for a burrito. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm going to the taco stand for a burrito. I just don't wanna cook. Not that I've cooked at all in the past six months. That's a lie. I've cooked two, two chicken dinners for two people that have come over. And I've made pasta twice and a Trader Joe's pizza. And that's it. It's been a weird six months. Aside from that, I have eaten popcorn, yogurt, burritos, tacos, some salad, nachos. <laughs> I just have a good feeling. I feel like moving to the new place is gonna be good. Run, run, run. <laughs> I'd like to meet somebody. I really would. I think that would be that would be so nice. So the furry one and I are headed down to go for an evening walk with my running partner. Her text was like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, walking the dog. Do you want to walk together? And she's like, yes. I love having that kind of friend. Just got a text. No, it was an email from the mediator. It led on that my wife is meeting with her attorney on Wednesday and he wants all kinds of paperwork and all kinds of things. I don't know how good or bad this is gonna go. That's part of the, the comedy of all this. You know, everyone's reassuring me. She doesn't wanna get attorneys involved. She doesn't wanna, you know, she doesn't wanna deal with lawyers. Well, you know what she's doing? She's getting attorneys involved and she's dealing with lawyers. While other people mean well and have good intentions, their advice, and quite often in this process, advice hasn't been exactly right because well-meaning people aren't necessarily legal minds or attorneys or know about elements of law. The life lesson I'm taking from a lot of this is, like, you know, listen to everybody and then make your own decision. And it's hard when people care about you and give you a lot of advice. I really do feel like I should take people's advice because they care about me. But at the end of the day, you're responsible for your decisions. At the end of the day, everyone else goes away. Make sure you can, you can sleep with what you've done. I, I am so grateful I have an attorney. That was some of the best advice I've gotten and I'm so grateful for the attorney that I have and his confidence and his knowledge and his support. You know, in this email that she just sent, there was just this sense of like urgency and momentum. For her meeting Wednesday, she needs to have copies of the disclosure, what proposals were put in writing and blah, blah, blah. And he needs to get up to speed as soon as possible. Like, I get it. Like he's, he's scrambling to catch up. Whereas my guy's been in the loop the whole time. Hey, let me show you the building I wanted to move into. It's kind of cool looking, isn't it? Uh, here's the fun part. It is still not open. We had a really nice walk. I like downtown San Diego. Do I love it? Not all the time, but this was a nice walk through just neighborhoods I don't usually walk through. And I think it's really gonna develop and, and be cool. Like if I had cash to spend, I would definitely be investing in the maker's quarter right now. I think it's gonna be cool. All right, we are in the car. We're gonna head home. We're gonna get the dog some kibble and I'm gonna work on making a list of all the things I own with my wife and figuring out who gets what. Things I know. She shouldn't get all the nice things and I get all the rest. That's her idea, but I think that's a bad idea. I'm really looking forward to getting relationship stuff settled so that it's not the thing we have to talk about every time we get together. It's draining, it's tiring. And you know, she's a really good friend and good for talking to about things, but there's more to life than this incredibly painful breakup. 
I would love to tell her about somebody I'm dating and excited about. That'd be great. That will be a celebratory day when I'm like, hey, I met this person. She's really great. Please let that be soon. <laughs> we talked about the fact that she still hasn't met my wife's boyfriend, even though they've been together for six months. Come on, that's weird, isn't it? To be dating someone for six months and to not introduce him to one of your best friends? Even when I say it out loud, I'm like, that is messed up. If I was dating someone I was excited about, I would want everyone to meet them. I would want my family to meet them. I would want all my friends to meet them. I would make the case for why this is so good, why I'm so happy. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. When I fell in love with my wife, I wanted everyone to know just the best thing in the world. These are just more puzzles I can't make sense of. I don't know why she does what she does or doesn't do what she doesn't do. I just think it's weird that she's introduced him to no one. I had a moment tonight where, like I understand the dynamics a little better now. I was walking with my running partner who I adore and uh, I was like, you know, did you hear that she's, you know, she's moving to San Francisco on, you know, she's starting work in San Francisco on October 1st. And she's like, yeah, I just found out, but I need to initiate that conversation because she would never betray her. You know, she would never, she would never tell me something that she didn't think I knew because she's a good friend. I finally get that dynamic. I still don't like how it feels though. I very much want her to just be my friend. And I realize that's asking too much. It's been a hard process. I'm not fixed, I'm not well. I, I know all this, but I'm doing better. Hi, you're okay, we'll get you inside. I'm a slow learner, but once, once I get it, like I get it, I internalize it, I can teach other people things. It's hard, you know, it, it's hard to have shared friends, particularly in a breakup this brutal, because what I really want is for everyone to be on my side and think what she's doing is messed up but I have so much respect for friendship and loyalty and the friends that she has that are loyal to her in the face of all this. I, of course, don't like it, but I respect it. I respect dedication. I respect loyalty. I expect being true to someone. I know healing will take a long time, but I'm sincerely hoping that as pieces fall into place in the next few weeks, few months, just in terms of selling my house, moving into my other house, her going away, dividing up our personal property, you know, just, just doing, doing the physical work we have to do to end this thing, that I will take steps forward. I have a, a support net of people, both professional and social, and we'll get there.